Class is in session. It is time to hand out some grades. What is going on, y'all? Fox Sports Talk back at it with another video talk. And of course, my NFL here to talk about the Chicago Bears. So if you're a Bears fan, and if you have not done so, what are you doing? Hit the big rest of strap button. I'm covering the team like a blanket, people. Off season, regular season, whatever the case is, free agency draft. I'm going to be all over it. Made a video for literally every single free agent signing the Bears had covering the NFL in general as well. So make sure you hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. As you see behind me, we've got a whiteboard video. You guys love these, so I'm bringing them back, incorporating more. And we're going to be grading every single Chicago Bears signing on day one of free agency. So with that being said, let me just start by saying, let's relax. It's only one day. You're not going to fix the entire team in one day. So these are just the first signings that the Bears have made. There's going to be more. We still have more salary cap space left. There are going to be more signings. But here are my initial reactions and grades for the Bears' first couple of signings. So they signed the following four players here. Linebacker TJ Edwards from the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Offensive lineman Nate Davis from the Titans. Linebacker Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills. And defensive lineman Demarcus Walker from the Titans. And here are their respective contracts. Years and contracts. I didn't include the guaranteed money, but I could talk about that. All right. So we'll start at the top here with linebacker TJ Edwards. And I like this signing one, because it addressed the need. We needed linebackers, right? Obviously, besides Jack Sandward, I've talked about it. Nobody else really is going to get a roster spot or a guaranteed one. And so TJ Edwards, a guy who's an immediate upgrade at that spot. And the best part about this deal was the fact that Ryan Poles was able to get such a steal in terms of the compensation. We're talking three years, $19.5 million, folks. Like a little over $6 million a year. That's a steal for a guy like TJ Edwards who gave you production. He was the defensive signal caller for the Eagles. He is a guy who's going to make an immediate impact, and he fits a clear need. So to me, honestly, folks, this signing is an A. When we take a look at need, we take a look at the contract, like Poles really, really hit it out of the park with that signing. All right, let's move on to offensive lineman Nate Davis, who we got for three years, $30 million. Now, here's the thing, right? Nate Davis was not one of my top options for the offensive line. Uh, we looked at guys like Mike McClinchy, who got a monster deal from the Broncos. I don't really um, blame Ryan Pulse for passing on that. Uh, and then there were uh, other offensive linemen that, that got paid as well. Juwan Taylor got a massive deal from the Chiefs. But here's the thing. In free agency, you have to kind of overpay a little bit. You don't have to be calculated with everything. Now, Ryan Pulse, you'll see, was very calculated and, and gave out team-friendly deals for every single almost every single one of his, his signings, but sometimes to get the best talent, you got to overpay. And I like Nate Davis, all right? But he's not one of the best talents out there. He's a guy who's going to be able to come in. He'll definitely be a starter for us, but where does he fit on the offensive line? Is he going to play left guard because he played right guard for the Titans? And we got Cody Whitehair there. So is Cody Whitehair going to get cut? Maybe. He's going to move over to the center spot, but then we got Lucas Patrick there. So it's like, are you going to move Tevin Jenkins? What are you going to do? It's not a clear fit, not a clear kind of need in terms of well there is a need but it's not a clear fit all right and that's my problem with Nate Davis the fact that it's not a, a picture perfect fit and the fact is that he wasn't one of the top options on the board if you had gotten you know uh, elite pass protection here uh, for Justin Fields I would have said okay you hit it out of the park but it's still a solid signing and you still got a team friendly deal for it so I'm going to go ahead and give it a B all right Let's move on here. Linebacker Tremaine Edmonds, folks. I, I got to be honest with you. This one came out of left field. I had no idea Ryan Poles was going to do this. Uh, four years, $72 million. I believe $50 million in guaranteed money. And Tremaine Edmonds is incredible. He's a star. And the thing I liked about Poles, you know how I just said, like, you know, you don't, you have to overpay sometimes. Well, if you're going to overpay, overpay for the stars. And that's the best thing about Ryan Poles today is he overpaid only for stars and I don't even know if this is an overpay. This is what you pay a, a, a stud linebacker who's just 24. I mean, Tremaine Edmonds was, is one of the best in, in football. And he's going to come in. And, like, now you have the linebacker spot figured out. Like, now you're set with Edmonds, with Edwards, and with Jack Samber. Like, you're set now. You're back seven. You're good. Now you have to focus on the defensive line, all right? But this, I, I'm sorry, this is a home run signing A for Ryan Poles here because you take team-friendly deals with kind of the average – you know, guys that you sign, average, below average maybe, but then you overpay the stars, right? If you had overpaid for average, that's a bad move. 
So Ryan Poles didn't do that. I like that. So I'm going to give him a for Tremaine Edmonds. Let's move, let's move on to the last one. So he signed defensive lineman Demarcus Walker, three years, $21 million. Look, he had a nice breakout season last year, seven sacks, and definitely helps. But I got to compare this signing in a vacuum, not just to what the Bears have, because what the Bears had in the defensive lineman room was, you know, the bar is very low for that. And so in a vacuum, Demarcus Walker is a rotational player. He's not a bona fide starter. He's not a guy who's going to come in and you can absolutely pencil him in as a as a starter. And honestly, you missed out on Dr Draymond Jones, the, the other defensive lineman, Dallin Tomlinson. Like there were other guys out there that you know would have been a bigger upgrade here. And you know this is where I really felt like this is a clear need. And yes, you did address it, but you didn't address it that well here because. I don't think Demarcus Walker starts for a contender. It's going to be the Bears, so he'll start for them. But this is still not, uh, uh, to me, a great move, in my opinion. It's an okay move. I'm going to say it's a C. It's an average move for a guy who's an average defensive lineman. But again, he did pop last year. He was solid. But overall, not too impressed by this signing. Still got him on a relatively team-friendly deal, if you will. But yeah, there you have it, folks. So, the four signings. A for TJ Edwards and A for Tremaine Edmonds, a B for Nate Davis, and a C for Demarcus Walker. Again, we still got free agency left to go. This is only day one, but these are my thoughts, folks. Let me know what you guys think. Give me your grades for the Bears free agent signings. Uh, so I'll probably do an overall thing at the end when all the free agent signings are done. But yeah, man, as always, 